welcome to the Breaking Bitcoin Market Update for October, Friday, October 9th, 2020. I'm your host, Crypto Jack, and I'm sitting in for Justin Wise today. And with me, of course, let me unmute these guys. Of course, with me is uh, Analyst Alex and Jason. How are you guys doing today? Fantastic. It's Friday, baby. How are you doing? I'm great. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, of course, so today's... Uh, Today opened, I guess, with Bitcoin in a bit of a bullish posture, I would call it, uh, after popping up in price the other day. Uh, we've since um, kind of followed through with that, and we're currently above 11K, so I don't know if that's a big barrier. Maybe after floating around for 10K for so long, it seems like we've done something big here, but um, what do you guys think? How, how, what's, what's your uh, general views on the market before we dive into the charts? I mean, we've been talking about this for like the last two weeks and everything. Uh, we haven't broken any trends significantly. I mean, I, I still think we're in that sideways territory, to be honest with you. I mean, if you look at um, – uh, it's currently on his. That's fine. But uh, if you look at where we're at, I mean, we're still going sideways here. Uh, 11K I don't believe is such a huge barrier. But, I mean, looking at the trend lines and stuff, um, 11.6 is going to be around the – the number that I'm looking for a break of um, right now, like I've said in the past year, I'm waiting for this buy up to <clears throat> get people all scared again, because I really do think that the, the larger play here is to the downside, but that will be determined. Um, I'm sure Alex can weigh in on that as well, but currently sideways um, in bullish posture here. I mean, the markets all look good. Uh, alts look good. Bitcoin looks good here. Uh, we just got to see how much volume that comes in now, you know? Yeah, I think it's I think it's a really I think it's really narrow minded to be like, oh, well, you know, Bitcoin's in a bullish posture as well. Actually, basically every market in the United States went on. a bullish. Yeah, every, posture. you're right. Everything is going right. Yeah. I mean, even S&P is going for a higher high right now. Everything. All markets are looking pretty good at the moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, as far as I, I, have you are you. Do you have anything more, Jason? Yeah, but he'd have to share my screen. Um, yeah, let me share your screen now, Jason, and because we're currently looking at uh, Alex's, let's let's dive into Jason's screen. I see you've got crypto bubbles open, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. this is on the hourly. Could you uh, switch your crypto bubbles real quick to the daily? Oh, or if, like, you, if you don't mind, just just so we can quickly take yep. a look. I don't look at bubbles. Yeah, that yet. gives you a, that, get, that gives you a better. Uh, a feeling of how the alts are doing right now. It's a lot of across the, across the board, across the sector. It doesn't matter if you're looking at DeFi, just regular, Pride Perp, anything like that. I mean, we're all getting some money coming back in, which is good to see. Uh, we, I mean, alts especially have been uh, kind of just l slowly coming down here, like for a while. So it's glad to see some money being put back in. But looking at the four hour here, yeah, the alts um, have been pretty placid. Yep. Yeah. And looking at the four hour here, um, this is what I've been expecting um like so we're still within this trend we did break down lower here which of course for me i was just waiting to see what kind of buyback we do get i have marked it out here at the 11 6 20 range on this where i do expect us to get a buyback up and then at this point i will be waiting i at this point i'll probably about 50 percent hedge around 11 6 because i really do think that we're going to get uh, a dump here um I'm going to give it some time at that moment. Of course, we're coming up to th some resistance here. Uh, I'm going to let this kind of formulate. I do expect this to go sideways, probably put in another tiny pennant just like this, and then push to the upside. There's absolutely the possibility that we drop from here. But I just don't see that with with what's happening in the rest of the markets. I do believe that we're going to get some FOMO in here, get some people to buy it up to at least this 11.6 range. Um, but like Justin's been saying earlier in the week, I mean, this we don't rule out any kind of Jericho action here. I mean, we could get uh, some amazing buy up to 13,000 for, for all we know. But just looking at the trend lines and fractals, I believe that we're going to get some buying pressure up to this 11.6 range. And then that's when I'm going to be looking to put on probably my bigger hedge down to the lower um, lower range of 24. I mean, you can even come to the weekly here. The weekly, I'm um, looking right about here. I mean, look, looking at this, I mean, that's around 7,000. Like, I really do believe that we're going to get some kind of test to that. 
but I think that's a little bit jumping the gun at this moment to be like, okay, then just put on your shorts at 11.6 because that's not necessarily what's going to be, but that's what I'm looking at right now and nothing's been invalidated in that. But l me as a trader, like what I've been focusing on lately is um, mostly just, um, sorry, screen and all. I've been focusing on mostly just Bitcoin right now because I think that we're in a very important moment in the market, in all markets, to be honest with you. I mean, because look at it, they're all becoming very correlated at the moment. I think that we're coming up on some some things that can't be planned, like the, this next election, what's happening with COVID, all of this stuff. So I really don't want to be involved in too many things right now. I'm in a couple of vaults that I've called for the group, which they know. But um, for now... I'm just more waiting on what Bitcoin's going to do because I've, I've put up some trades for the group on multiple Bitcoin longs that have all been uh, pretty much all of those positions have hit all their TPs except for 20% of the four hour signal that I put on. So everything's looking good here. So now I have plenty of room from the 10 6 to here to kind of really figure out what's going to happen. But like I said, I'm really liking that 11 6 range. All right. Well, I guess uh, short to midterm I'm bullish until yep. get up a little more to the 11k range, but uh, potentially a uh, you heard it here I mean, Jer we're in it. Jericho we're situation in it now. could have a real I mean, big breakout scenario that might be you know might be the bait to uh, have retail FOMO and before we do the big and, reversal. And if you really think about it, every single time things like this have happened, that's exactly the narrative that happens. You get some kind of big buy or something like that that gets everyone like, nope, this is it. This is the one. And then everyone longs it, and then it comes back down, and then they short it, and then it comes back up sideways. So, I mean, I think playing this cautiously is the way to go without – I mean, especially if you don't need to use leverage, don't use it. But at the same time, I think – Still, um, I'm sure there's a lot of people wondering if now is a good time to buy. Seeing, you know, we had this big news that just came out earlier. This where was yesterday, I guess, was um, uh, Square, right? The guys with Cash App, Jack Dorsey's uh, payments app. Um, Who gives Squ a shit? I mean, fifty million dollars to it's Square not is like such a bullshit tiny amount. You know, I pulled I that out of his pocket. Insulted. I'm insulted by the amount of money. Square can take the money back. Take your $50 million and stick it where the sun don't shine, Square. That is all Square thinks about Bitcoin. MicroStrategy at least had the decency to put their entire bankroll into Bitcoin. Square puts a measly $50 million. They make $50 million in like an afternoon off of transaction fees. It's That's a, that's a nothing burger of a news item. It's called uh, dipping you know, your toe, Alex. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you know, I thought dipping their toe in was when they, you know, instituted, you know, crypto buying in their cash app. And it's like, oh, wait, this is actually really profitable. I, I will uh, add, I will add for yeah. Bitcoin as well that yesterday on my sensitive system, we did get a full long signal. I was already in enough long positions um, that were called for the group that I didn't call it. But technically, this position is still open. It would have had you in yesterday at 1094 yeah. and you're looking at a take profit out of 11216 which has not completed so i i can't completely say that it would be stupid to look at any kind of a bitcoin long here but we are above that guys, guys, for that one I, why are you guys so tepid about being long here it's like yes we want to be short eventually maybe around 116 maybe around 12k but like everything is firing and saying go go for it. Like you know, the yeah, it, it was. Up. Every, but every market is pointed up. We're we're above the baseline on everything. Uh, the oscillators are all pointed upwards and they're above zero. You know, I think, I I, I think you know yeah. people have been stuck in kind of a bearish mindset over the last few months, and uh, it's kind of hard to break out of that. I myself, uh, you know, I, I shorted, uh, you know, a few of these assets uh, this morning and I kind of like broke even, you know, barely got out in time. But, you know, it's really I don't think it's the time to. You know, Bitcoin will show weakness when it's time for us to short it. Like, you know, I, I definitely I'm not setting any limit orders short. I'm not like right now I'm looking for longs only. Well, and I'm speaking from the sense of my system driven 
sentiment because I'm not just going to go say I don't know what other people are showing or what their systems have. What mine said to do would would have been in yesterday, and I'm well above that mark now, but I'm not to the TP. So I could also look at yeah. this as I could take a – like half risk on a trade up to 11 to 16 or something like that. But like I said, I'm already, I think enough risk, but saying that to other people, I don't want to just go say, Hey, fucking go long guys. I mean, look at everything's pointing up that it dumps. You Wait, know? What do you mean? I think it's that, impo- that's literally our job. That's what we do. Hey guys, everything's pointed up. Like you should be long here and not short I here. I am long. Like, I already am long. Yeah. yeah. I am. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Listen, so it's clearly a testament. Definitely. Um, yeah, this, this whole thing, Definitely, the Cheetos de- today. definitely demonstrates yeah. how, um, uh, I guess, how bearish and how cynical, I guess, some people are. People have been burned so many times. There's been so many uh, fake outs, I guess, on the road to new Important all-time lessons. highs in the last, I guess, 12 months or more. That uh, every time you do get a green candle above 10K, uh, people don't take it seriously. Everybody's waiting to have their heart broken on the next run to all-time highs. And maybe that's where we will get that breakout. But And who knows? We could get the breakout here. I mean, we don't know. But I will tell you this much. I'm sure the other thing that's weighing on most people's minds is that, you know, we are heading into Q4. Oh. And we do, we do have the Corona, election, the everything. lockdown part two. And it, I think a lot of people are, are waiting for... Uh, a March meltdown yeah, type, exactly. type of event. A lot of people are feeling bearish. A lot of people are yeah. waiting for this. Hey, you know, maybe the contrary thing is to be long here. I mean, yep. let's take a look at how bullish the markets are. Yep. Basically, I'm... over the over last weekend, Trump got COVID and, and the, the market went down when he got COVID. And then... <laughs> All right, so... Then he announces after he's better, there's going to be no stimulus. And the market is basically like, oh, well, in that case, you can drop dead and we don't care. Uh, th- th- the market started going up. Uh, Goldman Sachs and I think Moody's released <laughs> released uh, memos about how, you know what? The economy is going to do just as good, if not better, under Democrats because they're going to spend a bunch of money. So, I mean, who really cares about Trump anyway? Oh, so of course, this morning after seeing all of that this week, Trump is like, "Well, maybe I will sign a stimulus bill." So the market's like, "Okay, cool, stimulus time." I, uh, you know, I think uh, it maybe between the contrarianness of you know everybody feeling so bearish over the last month, and uh, and the, the market now getting the surprise news of a stimulus, because I feel like earlier in this week people were, were really settling in. It's like, okay, there's just really not going to be a stimulus. It's going to be like you know a shitty couple months. And, uh, you know, this news uh, that, that Trump, according to Kudlow, uh, supposedly has signed, uh, signed the new stimulus into law. I think that's, uh, I think that's big. Do you want to switch over to my screen? I think he's on yours. Oh, is he on mine right now? Uh, I am, but I uh, just switched back to my browser, but I'm going to throw you up on the screen very shortly. Um, I'm just going to actually, you know what, while I'm here, uh, I'm going to quickly give a shout out because I haven't yet bigged up everybody who's in the live chat right now. So I'm just going to say hi to Sainzy, uh, Asriel's in here, Mr. Ether, Mr. Hut QC. Yes, we have all the OGs, all the VIPs already in here in the first few comments. I see Dark Rico, um, Mac W. Uh, S180XT, Boris Bitcoin, yes, I see lots of regulars here, Bob the Builder, shoutouts to him, Kyle Mitchell, Damian Hughes, uh, Dan, so we got a good number of people in the live chat, thank you guys for showing up, here we go, uh, I see, uh, yeah, for you. instance, uh, Mr. Ether said he's 2x long on BTC, so... Uh, we have at least at least one one guy in the crowd who says he is long. We don't have perma long. bears in they're, here. We're, I they're in the group, damn it. I guess yeah. we are. Um, yeah, if you're following Jason Singles, you better be long. Straight up. Uh, RN3037 says, yo, Meister D, David Rice, Yorick. Okay, thank you to everybody sounding off. Um, let's, let's dive into Alex's... Um, seen right now alex i got you up on the screen why don't you uh, take us to the charts what do you see okay so uh looking at bitcoin uh what i've been looking at for the last couple of days is this a uh, very simple classic symmetrical triangle pattern uh yesterday we broke to the upside and interestingly if you take the measured move of this so you measure from the bottom of the pattern to the top 
And then you, you basically, you just duplicate, you just literally copy and duplicate it. And then you measure from the breakout. That takes us directly to the local point of control located up here. Actually point of know, control right? there. Yep. yep. Which as we know, price loves to retouch. If if we are to get short, this is actually where I'm looking. Um, you know, this area does did initially look nice to me. This uh this you know eleven six area, uh, eleven eleven four area. Uh because this is sort of previous uh previous support. Um and you know, expect it to be challenged as resistance here. It was uh held as resistance right here, but you know, we've got this measured move. And, you know, I really, if a short is going to procure here, what I think I would want to see is one more fake out towards 12K to get people excited. And then, and then boom, just yeah, like a dump right in their there. trap. Yeah. And then I want to enter on that first sell off where people get trapped on 12K because then we'll know those, those buyers will be trapped and then they're, they're going to kind of protect our position and our, uh, and our uh, and our stop because they'll be looking to get out of, at break even because they'll they'll have long this area right here. Um, as a matter of fact, I, it, it's it's not a terrible strategy. I, I imagine many people have some buy stops set up here above above twelve thousand. Just set like, hey, next time we're above twelve thousand, let's let's buy. So that's that's sort of uh, my 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 current short term plan here on Bitcoin. Uh, we've been. Uh, this has been kind of the plan for a couple months now, almost. I, I, it hasn't been a couple months. Weeks at, le me, weeks at least. Yeah, We've been talking uh, about this, yeah. And like it, it goes to show like the way that you're charting this and the way that I do, uh, we basically have the same narrative here. Yeah. Like you, yours is up to the, using the point of control up to a, a eleven seven, which I do like. I think that's more accurate, especially for a point of control. And mine's going up, which is more of a guess around eleven six of that control. So I mean, yeah, we're we're both right in there, which I do like. Yeah, roughly early September or something. This has been kind of the plan, and uh, I like I said earlier, I think we'll actually burst through this area. I think I think we'll we'll end up in this area right here, and then it remains to be seen. You know, looking at the weekly. It'll be kind of a bullish setup, you know. We'll, we'll be up here. We'll have we'll have a turn on uh, our weekly time transformation. Ethereum will likely be looking even even more bullish. <coughs> so Ethereum Bitcoin is recovering nicely here. Kind of broke out of this uh, descending wedge pattern. I'm, I'm imagining we'll retest up here again. And uh, combined with the uh, bullish momentum of Bitcoin USD, um, I'm expecting probably a move all the way up to the 440s here for FUSD. I'm uh, this this area is still untapped. And then if we break this area, I, I'm only looking to long. I, I will no longer be looking for shorts. Um, it'll be a very very strong bullish signal. I mean, we'll be yeah, we'll be we'll be up here, guys. <laughs> what, what more can you want? So. Obviously, this this looks very bullish on the weekly right here for Ethereum. So, I, I I hesitate to be like, oh yeah, I'm definitely looking for shorts. I'm gonna dump my long as soon as we're up here. Maybe I won't dump my long. It really depends on how bullish we're looking. But you know, I think it would be it would be dangerous to to get up here and then forget about all the all the time that we spent down here. You know, when when you look at when you look at the monthly. You know, there's still a move to go down. You know, we could easily just we're getting a we're getting a turn right here. Just boom, one more test down here, and then a move onwards. That can all happen in the span of a month. That that can happen in the span of a week. Still a lot of time um, in crypto. I mean, a month in crypto is like five years in regular stocks. <laughs> exactly. So so all all of this could happen in the span of a month. Comes back like maybe maybe here or even down here. And then it just gets, you know, bought up really quickly. Uh, that's, that's just a possibility. So let's, um, what I want to do is, I, you know, I mentioned that the, the broader markets are saying, like, now is probably a good time to continue, uh, continue with bullish speculation. So the Dixie 
not looking hot here. We have a extremely strong three-day uh, bearish divergence, which uh, can sort of be seen here. So we could either retest the bottom down here, or um, if if it ends up being a, a really uh, a really strong run on speculation, we could even end up uh, testing down here. Um, so this is something to keep an eye on because this is this is our barometer of uh, of speculator sentiment. If they don't want dollars, it's because they want to buy stocks. If they do want dollars, it's because they don't want stocks anymore. Ouch! 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 Pain! 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 Oh, hello. Let me buy some stocks. So that's uh, you know that's that's uh, what Dixie is here. It's our it's our little barometer. And every country, not every country, but most of the major ones have them. I've got here the currency indices. This is the AXI, the Australian Dollar Index, the BIXI, the SIXI, Dixie, XI, Jixi, and Sixi, which looks uh it's looking kind of strong here. I actually think we may need to uh we may need to end up adjusting our uh our forex our forex pairs because um we were short from here, took profit, and I think we're still short, but we're most likely gonna be getting uh most likely going to be getting some stop outs on uh on our forexes uh, at break even. So oh. yeah. We see the Dixie moving and what happens? The Dow is up. We have here, NASDAQ, up, and S&P up, of course. I don't really, no, I don't want to do that. Let's take a look at precious metals, and then we'll we'll swing back over to crypto. And uh, Jason, why don't, why don't you and I, we'll, we'll take a look at uh, the altcoin market and see what, what some good pairs are. Yeah, there. Uh, all right. So... Contracts are differences, that's right. I have so many lists here, guys. It's hard to remember where everything is. Oh, hello. Ooh. This looks like a pretty strong signal. This is a this is a strong three-day turn here. And a strong three-day bearish uh bearish divergence on silver. Yep, silver's like turning it. up big time. Well that's yeah, that's kind of like that's Bitcoin. Some obvious divergence. Yeah. Yeah. And I really whoops. Like out, like out, and I really like this because this is a uh, this is a this is a low volume node right here, and probably just going to shoot right through this area right up to here. So I would at least take silver to uh, twenty seven bucks, and then uh, maybe we'll see. Probably trade sideways, and then if uh, depending on how the markets go, either silver continues or we finally collapse uh, to uh, to retest the uh, previous highs down here. Palladium continuing onwards, as I have been saying. Let's get in there. Gold. You know, I guess it's it's also strong, but I think I would rather be in silver than gold right now. It's just it's a stronger chart. Yeah, and I, I've always felt like silver has a lot more room to grow than gold, but of course gold has room to grow as well. I just always feel like uh, silver is kind of where I'd be wanting to put my money. That's just in my head, though. Copper, oof. This might actually do the thing I said it was going to do. It was down here. I was like, nope, it's going to come up here. Bop, bop. Screw everyone. Well, yeah, usually just wait, like, in your head, think of the scenario that would screw the most people, and then follow that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes that's what we do as an analyst. Just think about what shouldn't happen, and that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, I bet these people must have been so... Oh, uh, and you know someone uh, shorted the shit out of that right at the end. They're like, yo, short it. It's yeah. going. Yeah, that's it. This is it. Guys, uh, if, if you're not still long agricultural products, you're wrong. Wrong. Oh. And then let's uh, let's take a quick look here at the the broader global markets. V bottom. Mm. Could be the bottom for WTI. No, 
we got more pain here, I think. I think we're I think so this. too. At least that level right there, yeah. Twenty six. Yeah. That'd be uh, extreme. Market's strong here. Probably move up up to this area. Chinese markets strong. Strong. Probably, That's a tight probably consolidation. Make a new high. So this is I, this is all, new all time high. I am at, I expect we're going to see continuation here at yeah. new all time highs on the uh, on the Chinese markets. Yeah, yeah look at this. That, that, that looks really tight. Yep. Some good uh, bullish divergence on that as well as very little white noise. I think that makes a, a new all time yeah. high. Writing that one down. China A50. French and Euro. Hong Kong here. Yeah, Hong Kong's been weak. Say that out loud. They know karate. No, they Whoa, don't. Whoa, India. Hello. What happened here? Uh, a bunch of rubles got spent. Wow. Uh, Rubles or, or Russia? Russian rubies. Who knows these days? Rupees. Rupees, that's what I was looking for. Yeah. Rupees. Wow, this is very, very strong. Yeah. Nah, all right. Um, I want to see it make a higher high there, but that's very interesting. Hold on. Let's just let's just see what's going on with India. Uh, seem to be oh wait 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 after go back up a little bit oh, oh shit sorry oh, I'm sorry I was looking at the uh, stream one it's a little behind it said after RBI's decision so there must have been some kind of news Oh yeah, well look at that. The World Bank of India. Yeah, RBA, uh, RBA policy outcome. So maybe they changed something within their policy. I mean, from what I'm seeing at a cursory glance here, there was a stimulus in India announced. Supposedly, Zoom announced support for the Indian rupee on its platform. Uh, I don't know how big that is, but that's news here. And um, in the market. RBI Day. So there, there's a their their Reserve Bank of India has its own day. Um, I'm not sure what this relates to, but maybe there's something to it. Yeah, this looks strong on every time frame. I would, I would just like find a way to long some Indian companies and get out of the way. See if you can get into some small cap Indian tech companies. <laughs> At another tech support sucks. Maybe don't do that. Ooh, man, that does look good, though. That looks like yeah. it's on the verge of breakout for sure. Yes, everybody, please do the needful and invest in India. <laughs> Taiwan looking pretty good here. These more all-time highs, I, I believe. Yeah. I, go, I agree with that as well. That's just, like, just get in there. Um, Let's just stay on the monthly right here. Let's just get it. Get an overall glance with the Ooh. Ten year notes not looking so hot. You gotta have some bearish divergence on that. No, not yet. So Nasdaq very similar to uh, actually, the Taiwan the, index here. Actually if you get a crossover there, that is bearish divergence. Yeah, so Nasdaq right here looks very similar. Yep. How much further? Uh, if you guys have any requests as well, make sure to put them in the chat so I can grab them. All right. Yeah, post so your chart requests. We'll get to them to eventually. So yeah. we see that the markets are are, are once again uh, bearish on the dollar and and thus bullish on assets. You know, no one wants to hold on to the dollar right now. It's much better to have it in stocks or in you know. I showed you all the other currency pairs. Like, you know, basically any other currency right now is better than the dollar. Any stock is better than the dollar. So that's that's investor sentiment right now. And we can see it written on every single market where people are just trading the dollar in for like kind of any asset they can right now. 
including crypto assets. So, like I said, I wanted to bring it back into crypto. So, for the past few days, uh, Bitcoin dominance has been doing doing very well. But today, with the stimulus announced, boom, that's it. Suddenly, we don't need this store of value. We're going to speculate off of all the money that's going to flow into crypto. So. Mm -hmm. So that that's that's the change in investor sentiment here. So as you can see, all during this time, people started accumulating Bitcoin while alts were bearish. And and if if the market news changes, we'll continue to do so. But but for now, this is looking like uh, most likely we've been trapped under sixty uh, percent Bitcoin dominance as resistance. Um, I, I would not be surprised if we just straight up rejected right here and continued onwards uh, in the same way that we're looking at this uh, for the Dixie. So think of the, you know, think of the Dixie and the, uh, I to think of the Dixie and Bitcoin dominance uh, similarly. It's like how, yeah. how, how risk, how risky are people feeling right now? And if we go over here and we take a look at the, uh, at the Dixie. It's not, it's not exactly the same, but they're clearly correlated. Yeah. So, so yeah, uh, the money pouring into alts today. Let's take a look at uh, total one. Yes, is being. So this is the overall crypto market cap. Act, uh, make sure that we have a, a screen going. Everyone's saying that it's black. Yep, yeah, I just fixed it. Sorry, guys. OBS for some oh. reason keeps jumping, no jumping scenes here, but uh, we're back. It's hard to run a show, people. Come on. Yeah. Well, not to so, cut you off real quick, but I noticed just noticed your tweet, Alex. Um, Esprit rug pulled. It's too bad. I had a small bag of that. Yep. Uh, well, I, is is Esprit and Brie the same? Or are I they think they're related um, because I, don't, I, I mean at the very is, uh, a clone. gotcha. Well, um, I think no, I think one token relates to the other. Either way, my my I noticed just by glancing at Uniswap, my Esprit bag is now worthless. But carry on. I'm very sorry to hear that. So it goes. Yep, indeed. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, this is I we've got uh. We've got this this relatively smaller amount of money pouring into a Bitcoin, and then we have here. So Bitcoin has gone up one percent, but Uniswap uh, coins are up five percent. DeFi up five percent. Excuse me, Uniswap up four percent. Privacy four, Exchange one, Shitcoins, coins, Mid coins three, Alts two. So money is prefer preferentially coming into Alts right now. And I think that makes sense because while Bitcoin has mostly traded sideways over the last months, alts are basically like pretty oversold. Like if you short this area, probably shorting the bottom. I mean, let's take a look at examples. So link is one where I called this, uh, you know, I put this in premium uh, analysis for the group way over here. I was like, hey, now it's probably a good idea to buy. Uh, we even talked about it yesterday, possibly yeah. taking a long on link. It's like, all right, so... We have here clear now break. Of the now downtrend. it's clearly broken. Yep. Yeah. As of today, clear break of the downtrend. We've got a nice uh, three-day signal. We've got a nice weekly signal that, well, actually, uh, it won't be a weekly signal until the week after this, but it's yeah, a nice close. wick in the support. I would take Cl this on the daily. And clear break of trend, though. Yeah. Yeah. Take this on the daily with, uh, with some quadrigo. It'll probably be like boom, boom, boom. And then you'll probably be out around here. Maybe you can hold on to a little bit. That's what that's what I would do with this if I were you guys. Um, let's see other examples. So all right, not BSV. That's not the example I want to give. BNB perpetual looking nice here, and that it's keeping strongly above the uh, the previous uh, the previous high right here. I'm I'm definitely I'm taking this long. I'll just have a stop right here, and uh, so nice and uh, nice and tight. And then if we if we break down here, we'll probably retest here, and that's cool. Uh, I'll probably take it long after that. So B and B perp you can see reflected most strongly in exchange perp on uh, on uh, on FTX. 
It's also a, a rather strong weekly signal being starting to be given here. As you can see, we're staying above the local point of control. It's always a good signal. Yeah, privacy coins, DeFi coins. We've hit this area. Yeah, guys, I you know, a, a week or so ago, I was looking for at least another small leg down. And I was I, I was expecting a bigger leg than this. I was expecting like another tap at this area. But this seems to be the small leg down that we've been kind of asking for. The, the markets feel shook out. Let's um All right, Jason. Uh let's uh do you want to you want to do some uh, all together? What do you think? Um at this point, I mean if you look at crypto bubbles, it seems like it's just market wide, so it's not doesn't make any sense to really focus on one specific one. So I mean, what do you want to do just lo low caps? Yeah, run well, what are you thinking? Uh, run, run through, run through some juicy ones. No, we're, no. Strength begets strength. And so I think we should look for the strongest charts and then preferentially pick those. Because All right, if well. We, if, we just want, if we just want the markets, then then we could take Prip, Perp, Alt, Perp, and, you know, and DeFi, Perp, and get, like, a good basket and then just, like, wipe our hands of the whole situation. It does appear that DeFi might be doing the strongest, then. DeFi, yep, DeFi is very strong here. So let's uh, let's... let's do a scan, boys. Do a scan. Yeah, we're going to. We're just trying to figure out which set of coins to go through first. Uh, yeah, there we go. Maybe take a few from the requests. I see. Uh... Yeah, I got them in the notes here. Cool, cool. T Dub's throwing them up. Yep, T Dub's got a few in. So um. Yeah, if you can if you can give me what T Dub has, I'll pull those uh, up. Otherwise, you can we'll go e E N J. E N J. I hope some people in the group got into that uh, storage BTC trade that I got us into last week. It's been just kind of lingering there, but finally this taken is off kind now. Of a nice spot. This this is where I said we should pick it up. That is a good spot. It's on the daily. And I think you could take that up at least on the daily to the next point of control. Mm. Let's see what that looks like on the 13 EMA system. ENJ, BTC. Uh, let me see. Is this... Got a continuation long two days ago. It's like a baseline pullback. I mean, I think uh, I think ENJ looks really good here. All right, I, I think I think it's uh, I think we've got a nice like little falling wedge pattern right here. Do you uh, do you see this too? Is it? Yeah, yeah. It's not perfect. Better on the weekly. Yep, this is ENJ has real potential here. I don't want to necessarily have it on my list. Uh, it's it's not strong out of the gate like some of the other ones are. question there um yeah so looking at enj um i mean do you agree that that's a good setup yeah i would well, i would i agree uh, that it's a good setup if you like enj for the fundamentals take it but it's not going on my watch list because it's not strong out of the gate the way a lot of these other ones are but you know land is up you know eight percent on the day comp is up uh you know, comp is up however much comp is up today. Uh, 4% on the day. Interesting reversal uh, to take right here on comp. I think I would actually rather be short lend here. What do you think? 
Can you answer a question? I have to keep switching back because there's such a lag on the YouTube one. Oh, yeah. Okay, lend. Um, ooh. Yeah, and then look at. Dun, dun, dun. Monthly TT cross under death signal. Screw you, Len. TT says you're going to die. Yeah, I mean, that's a. That's definitely the opposite of what we've been looking at throughout the rest of the market there. That looks yeah. a lot worse than everything else. All right. So, yep, can see that's in the buy zone. Uh, LRC is not bad here. This is actually pretty strong movement down. I bet you could take this to at least here, if not here. I don't, I don't see any uh, bullish continuation out of that. And, yeah. I mean, the monthly is telling you, get out. Mm -hmm. It's probably true here also for LRC. Monthly is also saying get out on this. <sighs> Looks like there's some nice volume down here. Mm -hmm. Right here. I like SNX here. So SNX, is that a lower low or a higher low? This is a slightly lower low. It it, okay. it, um, it stopped these people out by like yeah. A few bucks. No grab. Uh, the best place for us to take a look at this is like on Coin Trader. So I happen to know SNX has more history than we're seeing here on. Uh, on on Trading View. No. Not the one I want. Boom. So a lot more history, as you can see. Man, sure would love eight cents, uh, eight cent uh, synthetics. Possibly. So we're going there. Um, uh, it looks like we're probably going to get a break, and we'll probably get a turn here on the Fisher. This is uh, it could be good for continuation. I would just be careful, you know. That's a tough also, one. Yeah, it's also you know a topping pattern, guys. This is a uh, this is a descending triangle. We're at a top here. Uh. I think there's the other things that just look way better than that right now because that one's kind of up in the air for me. I mean, that could go either way. Yeah. That looks strong. Yeah, I like this. Uh, oh, yeah, we were talking uh, about Ren yesterday. Yeah. I believe they got a Coinbase listing as well, so it wouldn't surprise me if Ren takes off. Yeah, I bet. I bet even if Ren doesn't take off here, We'll still, still get a movement up into yeah, this area. Right at least here, halfway so. through that other wick or the other other yeah, candle. Kind of kind of alleviate the oversoldness. Like maybe up to here. Some people Perhaps are trying here. to get some people trying to get out. Yeah. Keep that on the watch list. So um I I think I would actually like to take this back down to back down to lows like down here so yeah we we got really oversold and then we have covered from oversold retested support turned resistance and now we're forming just, another top here now you just got to see if that trend line breaks back down yeah and we've already got a four four hour cross over signal so you can see here we've got a um Nice four hour bearish divergence. So I, I think we can at least take this strong short into this area right here, if not down here. I actually I, I'm probably gonna put bearish that one on, on bearish on uni for sure. Yeah. 
Uh, I don't know. We could get one more. We could get one more test of uh, of this area up here. Yeah, I, but I just I would still love to see us retest down here first. So one of the reasons why I'm uh I've been looking at this uh this is a very classic candlestick chart pattern. This is a uh, three black crows. So it, it basically shows increasing bearish momentum. As you can see, the candles are increasing in size, volume increasing also. So yeah, we've got we've got uh we've got some alleviation of that selling pressure right now on decreasing bullish momentum. So we get a retest of this area, maybe even right up here on the daily. So we could push through one more time, tap this area up here, and then break back down. So that's that's something I was looking at this morning for Una, but the trade just hasn't kind of completed yet. I've I've been scared out of it a couple times. So, let's look through the low sets. Oof. These are all so beautiful. There's definitely some money to be made here. Yeah. Start at the bottom. AVAX, not bad, but there's just not a lot of data. Also, not a lot of data here, but I am seeing falling, falling bearish volume. So that's something, but we're still cross under. Iris potential has potential here. That looks a lot like Ethereum. If I remember correctly. Actually, this looks like a lot of them. This also looks like, yeah. I'll show you all purple. Um, yeah, yeah, it does look like, like alt purple as well. Well, I mean the entire yeah the entire market's looking like that. Yeah, that's almost identical. <clears throat> Which is strong uh, evidence of continuation. Yeah. CTSI I, here is not bad. That should be on a shirt, Damien. I got my girlfriend to buy Link at nineteen dollars, and now she won't talk to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My condolences to Damien. <laughs> to that single Damien out there. You know, these are, I just, I want more confirmation on these guys. Like for, if, if the market turns suddenly, like, you know, look at that garbage. Yeah. Like Sorry. Th this looks like very, very bottom me behavior. We're, we're, we're at the very bottom of the range. We see all these wicks to the downside. That you know that it's like oh well we just we just couldn't pierce this area, but at the and, same time it would really only take one one strong market reaction to like finally break this bottom, and then we make we make a we make a new all time low. Which I mean hey look at this monthly just did, we just did yeah yeah is this really a monthly that you would want to rush into? It's not a monthly I want to rush into. Yeah, take away all the other day most of the other data and yeah you'd be like no that's a bearish signal right there. But people convince yeah. themselves since it's all time low, it can't go any lower, and that's just not how it works. You're so right; it can always go lower. But I mean, looking at things like that, it's—I mean, especially right there. Uh, but uh, fundamentally, I don't think it's silly to look at taking a small position on that bounce back. I mean, of course, stops no, of course, where I, they I need agree. to be. But yeah, like th there is an opportunity there for sure. Uh, I think Blaze here is really good. Look at this wick. Look at this. Look at this wick that we had today. Yep, I'm still in BLZ, which is, it's been kind of just doing nothing. But uh, getting some action today out of it, which is nice. So. Yeah. Um, oh, Raven, nice. is it is it finally gonna stop? Making finally, it's today? time for Raven. Jesus. There, it's probably there, gonna keep going down. There is a bullish uh, divergence. I'll say that. And we do have, it looks like a break of this trend line. Let's see. It's almost there, but it, yeah, a close of this candle. I'm going to be looking you know, at RVN tonight for sure. You know, I bet you, you could probably take this up to like here mm -hmm. and here. Uh, yeah, this looks like ripe for a quadrigo reversal trade. Mm -hmm. 
This looks a lot like um, the Doc trade I took last night. I mm -hmm. took Doc just completely, um, <clears throat> not based off of any kind of signal on a system or anything like that, basically just off of the setup of the price action and uh, time transformation. And uh, yeah. Raven looks a lot like Doc, so which yeah. currently is up about, I mean, not crazy percentages, but 6% from where I entered yesterday, so... I noticed a comment from RN3037 in the live chat who was asking to check out Raven and XVG, so... Um, oh, as... well, let's check out XVG. You know what? XVG, XVG is on this low sat list. We'll, we'll, we'll be getting there. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Um... Uh, he, he did say that they got crushed in BTC value, and the small position here may have an opportunity long-term. I mean, that's one way to play it. Well, and that's kind of what we're talking about yep. in, set, in the terms of these alts anyways. Like, even if you don't, like, love the project and stuff like that, when you're looking at it just from, like, a technical spot, like, there is opportunities here. And, I mean, RVN, XVG, I, I mean, we'll, we'll get to that one. But RVN, I think, definitely yeah. has some potential. We're not getting five-year holds here, people. We're looking no. for stuff that is going to bullishly appreciate either for a day, a week, a month, whatever. We just want to make some cash. Let's get These some profit out of it. Gonna go up. Yeah. So it's like, you know, here, it's buy this area. Well, we tap this area. And uh, I kind of don't like this. It feels like it might be loading back up into resistance, and then it'll dump some more. So I would be a little cautious here. But I, I do like uh, um, agility here. Singularity. Sorry, I played too many video games. You could tell. AGI must be the agility. So <laughs> I need more mana. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, mana not doing as hot as some of the other ones. I wouldn't pick it up here. I like no, some of the other I ones. Better. I don't like that either. It is staying above the previous uh, yeah. swing high, so I'll give it. I would, I'll give it that. I, I, keep watching that one just to see if you continue to get higher lows. Yeah. But, yeah, I wouldn't want to do anything with it right now. Vibe. That, that, it well, is if the that area. is in the spot we marked. Yep, yeah, so it's in the spot we marked, and we, we have a break of this trend line. Finally break it. Retest it, so. Sweeping all the, uh, yeah, sweeping that liquidity could be the, the turn. Not vibing that very much. Man, that is a hard monthly candle, huh? Yeah. What does this look like? All right. I mean, I that had to to uh, back to uh back to like two hundred. It has held quite a bit there. This is totally cool to take back up to 200. I would I would want to dump it when we reach this resistance again. So yeah, I, and this is a it's a very strong trade, guys. You know, it's nothing to sneeze at. This is I mean, I'll get out of bed for 45%. But where's that here? 300x, Alex? We need 300x. Uh, ruined it's, by all season. Yeah. It's so funny that people are like, well, I don't want to do that. Like, 44%? Are you out of your mind? This looks like a really strong chart. And I think I want to see it pull back even more into, into the 700s here. Oh, yeah. AST had that just blow off a couple months ago, didn't it? Yeah, I think I want to see it pull back down into this area. I agree. Before. To that trend line. Yeah. Mm, yep, yep, yep. That's fine. CMT just made an all-time low. Not really what we're looking for. Ren, what we discussed, this is not a bad spot. We've also got a bottoming above zero here. Yep. On, uh... I think Ren's going to be one I take today. Poa. Man, that doesn't look... That does not look terrible. No, it doesn't. Because this is like... This is like institutional... Uh, uh -huh. I guess you'd call it like advertising where, you know, they didn't have to do all this market buying, but they did the market buying so that other people would see it and be like, oh, what's this thing? Go, What's going on over here? Because as we know, they could just, you know, if, if you know, if institutions are accumulating in an area, uh, it, that that's what we see here. That's that's what these points of control area are. They've got a, they've got a bot that sets their buys and sells, chops them up. 
over time in a certain area. And then as uh, as price wanders through it, that's how they get their orders filled without moving price. And that's why whenever we see consolidation in an area, we see uh, we see a point of control form because that's where the uh, institutions are getting their bags filled. And that's why the most volume is transacted in those spots. That's where the institutions are getting their bags filled. So. I like Poe there. Yeah. Uh, I think I, I want to see a pullback all the way back down into here for RCM. Maybe. This could be, I mean, if you think about this like a spring, the springs are not retested in a Wyckoffian pattern, but I'm just not ready to take it. We've got no confirmation. Matic. I've been doing too hot. Got on the monthly. I say no. I say it's got further downside, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, on at the, least on to that hand, lowest, yeah, lowest line there. Yeah, Matic. Uh, let's let's see if we can get any any older data. Oops. Yeah, I, when you look at it with all available data, do you really want to buy here? After we're we're just getting this we're 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 just starting to get this turn here and uh over I I just I don't like this let's look at this on the weekly here and honestly you have plenty of, even if it's it is the bottom looking at that I think it has plenty more time to hang out there yeah the the only the only kind of TA that I would see that would recommend this is if you think of this as like a retest of this previous all time high. And time transformation kind of resetting here on the weekly. We got a turn here. You could and maybe say if we back above this area right here. I'd be like, okay, okay. Yeah, and since right it hasn't hasn't closed yet, but you could be looking at some bullish divergence. Mm. Yeah, you're but right. You, you this have would to... be a strong bullish divergence if it closed. But like, if even, it started looking downwards, then it wouldn't be a bolster burdens anymore. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You got to let that close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not pointing that out to our viewers who might not understand why you're saying that. Yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, that's kind of why I'm bringing it up anyway. It's just for the people who don't look at that stuff, you know. And, and it's something that's pretty easy that to notice. Once you notice it, that'll probably help you talk yourself out of some trades you're trying to talk yourself into. Yeah. Next on the list, it looks like we got Adam. Okay, let's pull up Adam. It's not what I want. It's not what I want. I noticed we also had a super chat from GBU Wally. Uh, he's got a couple GBU. of requests. He's got a couple of uh, requests in there. I'm sure we'll tackle those, but we definitely don't want to miss some, seeing that they came packed with a... Uh, a nice little donation that. here. We had a super chat. Yeah, See, boy. GBY is the 999. Good. Sorry, say again, This is Alex. how good our accumulation areas are, okay? Some of them, they're like three quarters of the way down the chart, and they got hit. Some of them, they're like right up there near the top, and they got hit. That's how it is, guys. You know, bullish charts, they tend to stay bullish. Bearish ones, they, they tend to stay bearish. All the ones that were, uh, you know, all these... Uh, all these alts that never made new highs, well, they, they retested their lows. And it's only the ones that made new highs that are uh, retesting, uh, that are starting to make, looking at making new ones now. Yeah, because they held for a little bit longer. What seemed like, uh, seems like their uh, support held a lot better. A lot of them just went straight back down to wherever they came from. Yeah, or as T Dub says in the chat, oh, yeah, Adam, please, still waiting on the Coinbase effect for Adam. I guess the coin base well, effect is never the coin base effect is like if they dump on you. Right. Yeah, right. It's as soon as it gets listed, it's all dumped. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I really I really like Adam in this spot. Um, monthly is a little concerning. The monthly would suggest that, does... that we should really be retesting here. Yeah, I don't like that so much on the daily there. Let's like let's slowly, ooh, you know, this actually that, that looks a lot get, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Like, huh. Well, okay, so we retest the point of control already. Hmm. And then if we think of this as uh, resistance support, well, let's look kind of nice. Okay, just have we a little need... lobster claw there on uh, time transformation on the monthly. Yeah. This could, this could turn around from here. I mean, that's an interesting chart for sure. Uh, the three days look a little weak here. Looks like we could Are break down two weeks? this area. Oh, sorry, shit. I would just be cautious. I think if we, if we got back over this area, if we got back over this area and we started consolidating right here, I would long it with extreme prejudice uh, and expect to take it to new all-time highs. Uh, right now I would be careful cause it feels a little overextended and, um, you might, you might could take it to here, but, uh, but until we, we break above here, I don't want to be looking for new all-time highs on Adam. That, that's how I feel about it. If that makes sense, guys. So right now this is resistance. And we can totally take this, like this support, clearly it's held. We take the support to the resistance. This is a nice little trade. I would, I would totally co-sign this trade. But, uh, but until we close up here, I, I, don't, I don't feel good about anything, anything more than that. And this is a nice area because it's also this previous swing all-time high. This is a nice consolidation area the price likes. Singles, ooh, looks like singles is gonna stay single. Although this is not a bad reversal signal right here. It's like we basically tapped into this right here. But remember, we, we don't we don't want necessarily we, we don't want to be buying things that are at their all time lows. That means no no one wanted to buy them through the entirety of the last all season. But this is a very nice, very very nice uh, and. Right here. And at the end of the day, most of the people that are here at Kraken Crypto, not but not everyone's trying to buy reversals, you know. And that's what this yeah. is clearly. Yeah. You're you're hoping this, for a reversal. PHB. This, this I like here. Strong boy. Strong weekly signal. Yep. Strong, strong three day signal, and also because you see we kind of like triple bottom here on the fisher and also where's the sellers where, yeah there's, there's no the volume sellers? there's no sellers guys so i i really like this even though i just spent about 10 minutes telling you guys how you should not buy reversals off the bottom um but this is an especially bullish reversal i mean hey it put in 40 percent today guys oh uh so yeah it's nothing to sneeze at okay let's see what else we got here Let's look at Crow USDT. I was looking at that for a short earlier in the week. Oh, well, maybe or that's a dumb idea. Now that I look mystery. at it. Yeah, that's just... Uh, Interesting. Kind of feels like this is just like a whole bunch of bullish divergences. Yeah. These are, I mean, these I, are, think... I, I think... You would, these would be like I consider class three divergences. These are like equal, equal, equal lows. length. Yeah, equal lengths. And, and I mean, are... looking at that, even like even if we're looking at a possible inverse head and shoulders, I think you could still even take that up to the neckline as a trade. Yeah. Yeah. This this here is strong. Like man, what a what a strong trade right here. What a strange look. Yeah, that's crazy. Look at that. Uh, time transformation on that on the weekly that's the weirdest shape i've ever seen oh that uh that happens when time transformation uh it's bounded by eight standard deviations as it approaches eight standard deviations it will do this uh it will do this weird curve thing yeah because it's because it, it's bounded it, it doesn't it, it have will, any time to reset yeah this is actually probably like 12 or 13 standard deviations. I mean, look at yeah, this. That's this is crazy. Like unrealistically bullish on how many weeks in a row. So, uh, I do like the falling volume into our buy area right here. Yeah. 
this is. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I do kind of like that. See? Yeah, and then three consecutive, like, boom, 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 lower lows. So. Yeah. With with a lot of declining volume, I like that too, EOS. I think I just got out of an EOS trade that was successful. No, it's IOST, not EOS. No, e I call it EOS. Oh. I don't know why. IOST. IOST, boys. Internet of somethings. That's not what it means. It's Internet like of something stupid. Internet Never. of stranger things. There you go. Bullish, guys. That works for me. Verge seems uh, to be getting there, but Verge it's all... Here, all... I... So you, you, you asked for Verge. This is a good spot to pick it up if you think um, it has potential. Verge is going to fall under our list of it retested its lows, and I'm not super interested in it right now without more bullish uh, confirmation. You know, if we get this turn and we break this trend line, I could see at least taking it up to here, if not up to here. And that's a nice 50, 100% move. But uh, once again, it's just not bullish enough. I mean, why, why would you want to take this when you can take CRO? It's what CRO is looking mighty bullish, like way more bullish. And then you, you think, okay, well, this could easily just have the same strength trend coming up through the next alt season. You can just sit back and just make steady gains every week. That wouldn't be too bad. Let's see. Is Hollow Chain finally going to do it? Probably not. Hollow Chain just made some new all time lows. Maybe. I don't know. I, I, I don't like this topping below zero here. I, I, I got myself a bag of hot myself, and it's a hot mess right now. Uh, nice one. But I've also accumulated a bunch at like five sets, so let's just see what so, happens with it. I like see a coin here because to me it's a clear break of the trend. Uh, that might be a little hard for some some newer people to like really really eye with uh, this very. This is this is what price charts look like uh, at at a very low sat level. You know when, when you've got when you got a high sat, it's got much more fluidity to it. But when when you're at a very very low sat level, it uh it's it looks blocky like this. Yeah, because hot's these are crazy. Yeah, these are these are the these are the smallest possible movements in the market right now until they introduce well, a one tenth of the sat, which uh some of them are gonna introduce it, soon. It's important to look at on that hot chart. Like yes, charts look the same, but each one of those candles is a twenty five percent movement. Yeah, because uh, it's you know, it's sat, at four sats right now. <laughs> This is not too bad right here. Let's zoom in. You know, this is interesting because it got sold off for the entirety of all season. Like, it pumped near the beginning, and then they just kept selling it off. But it held pretty strong. It just kind of traded sideways. Not seeing a lot of selling volume. on These are monthlies. Not seeing a lot of selling volume here. Slowly go down here. Anyway, sitting at the highest point of control and reacting as resistance currently, so. Yeah, I wouldn't buy it yet. I but I, I do like the diminishing volume. You see sellers reducing in volume, buyers beginning to increase in volume here. It's something to keep an eye on. So I, I like the volume pattern. The uh, the price action leaves a little bit to be desired. All right, let's um, look at let's look at GBO GBU Wally's request here, and thank you, sir, okay. for the nine ninety nine super chat. Um, first, let's look at Neo, and then FIL. Oh, okay. Father in law. Out to be. So very similar here to uh, what we've been seeing for uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Double this is bottom pretty nice. On TT. Looks like it wasn't a lower low. Two crossovers on time transformation. I mean, yeah, you could even take that halfway up through the latest sell off, and I think that's a good trade. Yeah, 
Yeah. I would take this to here. You can see the kind of volume ledge here on uh, on our VPVR is also you, uh, resistance here. I think you're so, going to get a little invert. I think you're going to get a little head and shoulders pattern, and then you're going to pop back down. Boop. We come up here. We retest yep. resistance, and then boom, we retest the local market yep. point of control, Bang. which is I don't want to call it unretested because I mean you can see all these wicks into the area right here. So mm -hmm. we did kind of retest as we moved upwards, but price just loves to test the same levels again and again and again. So, but I think that entry from there to that last spot you draw on, I think that's a good trade. Yeah, hundred percent. Ninety-eight percent. I think it's enough low sat. Let's let's take a look at the large sat. Do, do we do, do, do we look at FIL? I did not. Duh. One second. FIL, USD. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, ooh la la. So is this Filecoin? What is what is FIL? I'm not sure. That's why I said FIL because I've never heard of it. I assume it's that FIL USD that you're looking at. Maybe. It's only on OKEX. Uh I'm in here, GB Wally. Let us know. Well, presumably he doesn't mean this one. That's the one he means, baby. Just open. <laughs> Check it's out it's yeah. Guys, guys, guys. guys get stop. in, get in, get in, get in. Stop the presses. Yeah, I think that is what That's he means. It. Oh, okay. Let's Thanks fill so. our yeah, buddy. I, fill our bags. <laughs> I would like to think. I'm pretty good, and I think I do some good TA with very little data, but this is beyond me. I'm sorry, he said, man. He I, said F FIL is Filecoin. It's a futures thing now, but gets released on the 15th, so I'm not sure how we're supposed to check it. Oh, no. If it's Filecoin, file coin, then we've got... Okay, there you go. got Polonix, So this is Filecoin. This is the IOU. So, yeah, this is, this is the IOU for Filecoin, which is unreleased. So... Um, IOUs are something that exchanges, I mean, they do. It's just like, you know, you trade it one for one for the coin. You're like, hey, yeah, the coin doesn't exist yet, but if you want to trade it right now, you can go ahead. And then when they do almost. Exist, swap them out. It's like a pre-sale, so, technically. Yeah, it, but it's even before the pre-sale. So, uh, it's like, oh, you, okay. It's like the majority yeah, of Yeah, so these coins don't exist yet, but you can trade these IOUs that Poloniex created and then you can trade them in for the real coin, or most likely, I don't think they're even, you're gonna even have to trade them in uh, once once the coin actually debuts. Uh, Poloniex will just swap it out, and then when you go to withdraw, you'll be withdrawing the real money. Right now, you can't withdraw the IOUs. Um, let's see, if we got any other charts here? Anything? Uh... Like little bit of data but i mean you got some bullish divergence it's up already quite a on, bit. It's up quite a bit look on the three day there you already have bullish divergence uh, not yet this could just like keep yeah up. i guess the price would have to drop out but mm -hmm. currently the way it's holding that's some good diversion go to the one day see what we got Ooh. nope uh, this is what it feels like to me Definitely, I don't want to buy it down here. Maybe for back up here, but then ah. I would just wait. Let's. I mean, it feels like we could fall out of the bottom and retest this area, but we could also break up. You know, right now we're at the very end of the pattern. I would just wait on Filecoin. And, uh, and and then if if we're if we're back up, if we break this trend line, we'll also be breaking horizontal resistance. And then I think at that point you could feel a little bit safer in longing here. And you'll also have you can also just set your stop right here. It'll be a nice trade setup. Right now, if you took a trade setup, you wouldn't really know what to do. So that's that's I think the best way to play it. While yeah. And I mean, if it comes out on the 15th, you could just ride out. Um, just don't do anything until it gets closer to that and see if you have any more really good signals. Like, say, if it broke above the trend line, it's closing above it at the 14th. I mean, that would be a good 
predicator for me that okay maybe on this release this is going to take off so right I, see, now, I you right still now, got time weekly, right, right now the weekly is still you know it's still a uh it's still in bears, limbo so. yep yeah Side so I would, just, I would just hold off well, okay let's see here we got some people asking for some 4x and the spy if we want to <laughs> Ooh, okay. That's good. I am definitely willing to talk 4X. Okay. So let's take a look at the currency indices, guys. So I use the currency indices a little like uh, Justin uses the, the currency breadth indicator, where you get a sense of what's strong, what's weak, what's trending, what's not trending. Uh, so, all right. So Australian dollar. So the Australian dollar index is giving us a nice, uh, nice continuation signal right here. We also kind of uh, just kind of broke this resistance today. So I, I do think we want to either be long the Australian dollar or, or short the base pairing. So let's, uh, I don't know, let me, I will just, I will just add arrows for my convenience. So this long. British pound, we seem to be getting some good, uh, a good uh, continuation right here. But I would hesitate to, ooh, you know what? I think I will take this because we've got a nice, got a nice inverse head and shoulders right here. I'd probably take this up to this area right here. I imagine we'll get a gap close. And the neckline. So, yeah, that's, well, it had to close like that in three hours. But absolutely, if it closed like that, that's the breakout, yeah. Yeah, and we'll we'll get a uh, we'll get a um, crossover. A, yeah, a crossover. Topping above zero. Above zero. Yep. Bottoming above zero. So it's mm. the topping below. It's the bottoming yes. above. It's again. the same. It's the same thing as divergences. You just mess it up sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, dollar. Uh, currently, we still want to be short this. Uh, we're getting a nice uh, continuation short signal right here with this topping below zero that you see right here. Where you know price kind of tried to recover, it's just like no slap in the face, boom slap down. Japanese yen strong here, but when you look at the overall, I I I think we may want to be looking to short the yen sometime soon. Cause we're just, you know, we're, we're approaching this large area of resistance that we rejected from several times. Uh, we've put in this, uh, put in these wicks up into this resistance. So it's something I'm keeping an eye on, but you know, we could just. Um, specifically what he was looking yeah. for here. Let's look at the pound sterling usd and australian dollar usd uh buddy we are going to because why so we know that the dollar is weak and we know the australian dollar is strong and we know the british pound is looking strong so what does that tell us so it's weak other things Great are going to grow pound, usd is going to be really weak right now let's take a look or excuse me, it's gonna be. Yeah, I was really gonna say it's gonna be strong. Oh, yeah. that's gapping, yeah. And this is also giving us that uh, inverse exact, head and shoulder signal. Exact same pattern, yeah. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna want. Oh, we're on cracking right now. No wonder this looks so weird. I was gonna uh, say it looks very wicky. I wonder. Here we there go. You go. Lot less volatility there. Yeah. So I would definitely want to take this uh, probably up into this area. If we, uh, yeah, in this area, as you can see, this is a traditionally resistant. So yeah, I would take this up to here, and uh, and then Australian dollar. Oops, sorry, that's the axis. You will find the same thing with the uh, with the Australian dollar being strong. U.S. dollar being weak, and so we'll we'll be taking this, and see we're getting that we're getting the signal right here, and so so you look at the you look at the uh, Australian USD, you look at the Axie, 
very similar. You'll you'll find that's true for a lot of these indices. And when you look at the Dixie, like what? Watch this. Ah, very interesting. So and so, and then this is the reverse. This is the inverse, rather. So if we look at this. Uh, so that should give you – remember, guys, these, these markets are all interrelated. These indices are, are derived by essentially subtracting out the other influences of other coins. Where it's, they take uh, – you know, for the Canadian dollar index, they take you know, the, Canadian, uh, the Canadian yen – uh, multiplied by uh, like the USD uh, Canadian multiplied by like the yen USD. And then you, you, you use that to subtract out everything that is not like the Canadian. Uh, so that's how these, uh, that's how these uh, dollar indices are derived. And that's how they'll give us an idea of where the different pairings are going. So, so you this, if we know the Australian dollar is sorry, we're, we're inverted right now. So, we know how the Australian dollar is strong. I bet you if we took NZD, AUD, this is going to look really weak right now. Yeah, and it has been. So let's, let's go over here to the FX. And we'll run through everything. Australian dollar, Japanese yen, strong. Australian dollar CAD, mm, strongish, but the CAD's also been a little strong. So, yeah, I would I would definitely hesitate to take this. Australian dollar USD, yeah, I probably I would probably look to probably look for a new high on Australian dollar USD. Want to see us? come up to this area right here touch this point of control for the market this is very interesting the australian dollar has traded sideways against the swiss franc for several months i wouldn't want to take it in either direction just because i, I would expect there to be more sideways although i if i had to be a direction i would rather be long the australian dollar than uh than short yep, yep. Mm -hmm. euro Ooh. oh euro looks weak against the uh this looks like a really good trade right here okay so we've got the monthly curved over we're getting a rejection from this local point of control slash consolidation area let's take a look at the weekly oh yeah heavy rejection from resistance here on the weekly daily is also looking real yeah i think i would definitely want to be short the euro cad right now euro overall looking kind of weak Although not as weak as the yen and the USD. Hmm. Come on. Guys, I charged too fast. I broke it. Hmm. Don't you die on me. Uh, okay. I'll just, I'll just exit and we'll redo it. Oh, that's loud. Something set up on my alerts. Was that yours or was that mine? Yeah, I think so. Let's see.
It's a super annoying sound, but I guess if I dude, it I always wakes sound. always wakes me up. <laughs> Beak. I actually you prefer know, and to the, do first, that. the first however long, I did not know where the sound was coming from. I'm like, oh my god, she, where she's is scared. That it's just correlated well, with me making money. Well, the thing is, because it's high pitched, you can't always count on other people also hearing it. They're like, what sound? What do you mean? Like, you it didn't usually, hear that? Like, it no. usually scares the shit out of people <laughs> at my house, yeah. at least. Yeah. USD, weak, oof. Now, yeah. interestingly, we're getting down into the area that I have marked as a potential buy zone for USD CNH. Yeah, kind of a strong area right here. For uh for USD JPY, I'm looking at this uh very long term uh descending uh descending triangle pattern. Uh I pro I expect we'll probably fall out of the bottom of this. But uh, you know, being following the pattern, if we did break up above it, well, all the better. Well uh we've got a direction to choose from. I think that falls out. Yeah. USD, Canadian dollar. Uh, this this looks like, you know, we're really topped compared to the Canadian. I, I would expect us to uh, to uh, to continue to fall here. You know, we, 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 we nailed this long right here, but it might be time to, might be time to kiss goodbye. You're taking profit, so. Yeah. It's the importance of taking profit, people. All that time just for nothing if you didn't take any profit. Yeah. Uh, I like I like the the Kiwi versus the dollar right here. Uh don't forget New Zealand just beat COVID again. And the US is well, we all know what a dumpster fire. Heavyweight right champs. Now. Yep, so the trend line is holding. Uh, New Zealand has been strong. I would I would consider uh, being long the Kiwi in some big ways, maybe especially against the U.S. dollar right here. So we did not have the same pullback on the Kiwi uh, that we did on uh, all these other pairings. Meister D wants to know if we can yep. take a look at the spy. Sure. I, you know, there's not much to say about the spy. I mean, it's going up, guys. It's going up with everything else. Looks, looks like it's. Yep. Yeah. Looks I like I right. think this looks ripe for continuation to to new all time highs, maybe. Hyper inflation. Oh, mm. uh, maybe. You know, I mean, this is still a sellable rally in the same way that that you that unit was. So. It could be a swing failure pattern. It, put the three day on here. You know, we could still peg this area and and put in a a swing failure pattern. You know, put in a, a very a very bearish, uh, very bearish divergence right here. But I just I don't want to be too bearish. You you know what I mean, guys? Like the the markets are, are bullish right now. The markets are going up, and, and you know I can make plans for for what I might do in a bearish case. But for right now, the smart thing is to be be long these things, and and then yeah. and then you know when the market does whatever it does, we can respond to that with with the plans we've made in advance. Okay, let's see here. I think the last two I got were Comp and YFI. So Wi-Fi is pretty that's that's not the right Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi too? Wi-Fi was pretty oversold. I almost longed it yesterday and I was kind of sad that I did not. This is a very nice three day wick right here. I'd like to have mm. myself a couple of Wi-Fi, huh? I think I would like Take it back up one to the red line. Down. We got, yeah. got one more test down, guys. Everybody who just bought 
bought the dip right here on YFI. They think they're really smart and they are going to get burned really hard. I see some volume right here that we're kind of uh, pushing up into. And this is, this is all oh, gap in uh, VPVR there to the lower. I think you, I think you go down and all the way hit like that five, nine range. Yeah. So this right here, guys, support resistance. So I would, I would want to pick it back up probably here. But more likely, I, I think it would be smarter to try and man. I, honestly, guys, I'm not sure. Probably around ten thousand, uh, which is roughly one Bitcoin. So I think if we look at the uh, YFI Bitcoin chart pairing, that's what we could probably stand to look at. So where where's one Bitcoin? One Bitcoin is. One Bitcoin is here. So I, I would say not until we see parity of one Bitcoin per YFI would I be willing to pick it up again. And probably less. Like I said, I if if you if you look at the other YFI chart, this this uh, kind of corresponds to this area over here. Let's see, this is right here. Uh but yeah, but but I mean if if we bounced off of this area, I'd be like, yeah, okay, I could totally see uh because you got to imagine the narrative in people's minds uh, where, you know, if if we're not worth two Bitcoin, we're maybe we're worth one Bitcoin, but we're not worth any of these prices in the middle right here. So price is going to move around very rapidly. It's kind of like silver between 20 and $30. Yeah. Or, or between 24 and 26, especially. Yeah. They just, it silver doesn't maybe work. worth 24 and maybe worth 26, but it ain't worth 25 bucks. <clears throat> This is a great point. Um, yeah. Okay. So, uh, and then comp. I think we were looking at comp. Comp, if I remember correctly, is a very interesting reversal case. Two on. If you told me you were picking it up here as a reversal, I'd be like, yeah, I can see it. Duh. Um, yeah. Maybe you could uh, take it back up into this area right here, which is a. Uh, it's actually not a huge movement. It's like fifteen percent, twenty percent. It's more than five. I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah, only thirty-four. Yeah. Ah. Uh, I would just be really cautious about buying this area, but it's. Interesting. Let me get some more data here. It's just, I totally get it. Like you know, if the entire market is is fairly bullish right now, then why not buy some good reversals on the on the DeFi? But at the same time, you know, the market's matured a little bit in the past few months, and and just because some DeFi products had a good run before, it could be different DeFi products that do well in alt season round two or, or DeFi season round two, or, you know, however it ends up shaking out. I, I have no clue. Whatever the next phrase is. Yeah. No, this is basically the same. Now here I think is how this, this little bit of extra data can help us. So now I see that we have this previous swing high. It was only for a, a couple of days, but that's where we're bouncing from now. Well, technically speaking, that's a pretty bullish sign. I think that is something to look at here. So tell you what, so pump. got to bounce here. If we break this trend line, which we, we very well may here, then I think you take it long. I think you could take it long till at least you know, this, this area right up here, which we discussed here-ish. Yeah, so yeah, I'm sure we'll retest up at least in this area, but just be careful, guys. 
I would much rather buy a trending asset. Anything else we want to look at, guys? I'm starting to get a little tired. Yeah, me myself. I got. Uh, I probably have to get going here soon. So you and uh, Jack. Yep. Anything in the news you want to? Um, let's let's take a quick look. Maybe let me just scroll through the comments real quick. See what we have here. Um, T Dub GB Wally's in here. T Dub says he's 60% in Crow and 10% BTC. So T Dub is very bullish on. The, on the crypto.com token. Um, T-Dub just wants the best card. We're on to you, T-Dub. Looking for that obsidian? Oh, dude, I can't yeah. wait to get my card, please. please. Um, yeah, GB Wally's putting us onto the Filecoin futures. That's really cool. I might have to look at the Filecoin. That is launching later this month, guys. So maybe like a week to launch from what I remember. Um, yeah, pick yourself up some IOUs, guys. You know what the price is. Oh, yeah. Is that only Money. on Poloniex, or is that like an ERC token on Uniswap, or? It's an ERC twenty on Poloniex. Cool. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I, I guess I didn't check, so let me. Um, smiles, J. Oh, yeah, we did look, and it, it didn't like just launch today or something like that. Like a few hours um t dub uh if time eth btc could we look at oh you know what we've covered a lot of charts i we... i already went back I, uh... I, I, the thing is i i did look at fbtc for you i, I can pull gotcha. it up real quick fbtc I... is a um is i believe a following wedge pattern that is broken up it's either like looks like this or looks like this and i'll be taking it uh, looks strong probably up to the Probably up to the previous highs, like right around here. So uh, that's that's the F Bitcoin, and so that's why we're a little bit more bullish on Ethereum than we are on Bitcoin because if Bitcoin looks to appreciate against it. Next. Um. Okay, I'm gonna dive into the news real quick. Uh, yeah. Let's just cover a couple right. well, couple uh, couple items here. Something else you have on your mind, Jason? Yeah, um, I was just going to say that uh, I do have to get going here, so I just wanted to thank everyone for coming out. I know Jack's going to get into the news and stuff, but um, uh, I just wanted to let everyone know thanks, and I got to duck so out much, real quick. Yeah, for yep. sure. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Jack. Uh, everyone have a great weekend. Um, I do expect Bitcoin to put in some gains here over the weekend, so uh, get your long hats on, boys. Sweet. See you next Monday. Cheers, dude. Enjoy your weekend. All right. Um... All right, much thanks to Jason for joining us for that, and I'm still here with Alex, of course. So Alex, let's just quickly dive into some of these uh, news topics, and then we'll wrap it up, unless you've got some other charts you still, your heart wants to look at, but... Um, I, know. I, I I think I covered, you know, broadly most of the markets, uh, dude, so I feel This like is the best, dude. This is how I like it. It's like a Gatling gun. Just endless stream of charts. Exactly yeah, how I want it delivered. Chart in your face. For the ADHD. Don't want another chart. Too bad. Here's a chart anyway. Serve them up like pizzas. All right, here we go. So this one relates to like kind of our title story. It has to do with the uh, Square, which is the company behind Cash App. You know, Jack Dorsey's firm, which uh, announced that it uh, bought fifty million dollars worth of Bitcoin. Um, recently and i guess this is part of their strategy moving forward uh in terms of having certain assets on reserve to kind of back up their um uh payment processing business uh where do we have here of course this is like i know you kind of downplayed this a bit alex uh saying it's just 50 million it's just not a lot yeah. but it's still but you know what man i do think this is significant in the sense that uh, this is a, still a major firm. It's not an insignificant amount of money, and it's kind of a signal, I feel, to like to the wider uh, institutional uh, uh, ecosystem, I guess, of, of finance. Uh, that you know, the water is uh, the water is nice. Come on in. It's like, it's like four thousand bitcoins. Four thousand bitcoins for a company the size of Square is like peanuts. In some sense, yes. But how about this? Then I'll, I, I, I raise you this. Uh, this comes just in the wake of uh, MicroStrategy. Do you remember this was the week before, right? This firm, MicroStrategy, um, took a $425 million bet, right? That's almost half a billion, dude. That's significant. So in two weeks, we've got two firms 
buying in on Bitcoin and trying to keep a bit of a, a BTC nest egg going forward. So, you know, that, that institutions are coming meme, you know, maybe this is becoming more and more real finally. So as, uh, let's see here, this is the co-founder and CEO of Gemini, Tyler Winklevoss, of course, uh, told his Twitter followers here today, saying that uh, first it was Are Michael... Are you showing your screen? Would that be showing this stuff on my screen? No, no, I'm showing it on my screen. I'm currently uh, navigated over to... Okay. Yeah, to Twitter right now. So this is Winklevoss's tweet from earlier today. First, it was Michael Saylor who, and publicly traded MicroStrategy buying 425 million of Bitcoin. Today, it's Jack at Square buying 50 million of Bitcoin. Tomorrow, it'll be another visionary leader and another and another. The tsunami is coming. So a little hyperbolic here from Tyler. I don't know if a genuine tsunami is coming. So, a little. Um, oh, that was weird. Um, I don't know if a genuine tsunami is coming. Um, but it sure looks like there is a bit of more institutional interest than ever before. I read something that the CME uh, futures right now are also like popping off in volumes. They're like up almost like to a uh, peak year, yearly figure, something like that. So that looks interesting. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. So I see this other article today. This came from Cointelegraph. Um, according to Bloomberg today, they had one where they suggested that Biden's winning the election would be good for Bitcoin, but bad for DeFi, and they have some kind of rationales that uh, um, that Biden's administration may be a bit different with their hands-off approach on crypto. Um, so this might be worth a read if anybody's interested to see. You know, is there something to this trend we've seen recently? You know, there's been a few between what the the UK banned of uh, derivatives, crypto derivatives platforms. Uh, seems like they're going after Bitmax. You know, is there something going on in the space? And are products like uh, Uniswap potentially? Uh, going to be targeted eventually by the feds, right? Doesn't really play well with their. Well, I mean, I have a question. Did you did you not see that the Department of Justice released new crypto guidelines? Uh, it did actually. Yeah, I should probably show you guys that as well. What did you think of that? Uh, it was sobering. I I understand that. Uh. You know, the the new regulations and stuff are meant to, I guess, protect American consumers, ostensibly. You know, that's what they say it's for. I don't know if that's true. But it's, you know, the regulations are supposed to protect American consumers, and the anti-privacy stuff is supposed to, you know, stop criminal activity, supposedly. Um, I, I don't know. I just... Like I said, it was re it was really sobering because I uh, you know guys, well, we made it, crypto made it, and we're we're a big boy sector, and uh, now we're about to get visited by uh by the other big boys who are going to tell us exactly how we're going to get to run things from now on. For sure, there's going to be a point where crypto intersects with like mainstream finance, and that's going to require a whole lot of fine print and legislation and regulation kind of applied to it so uh there's going to come a day potentially where crypto industry is kind of accepted into the financial fold but not everybody is uh, you know uh, deemed uh viable for entry let's put it that way uh so this new one was from of course uh the attorney general uh bill barr who uh, announced the release of the report cryptocurrency enforcement framework the report examines the perceived dangers of cryptocurrencies, namely that they can be used by, of course, criminals, but it adds such assets as vitally important to the U.S. and its allies. So, you know, if there was any silver lining to this, it's uh, still an acknowledgement that this is vital future technology, right? So there's still, again, this kind of leads us to think that um, eventually the regulars, the authorities, the the policymakers are going to acknowledge that this is like tech that you can't sleep on this and we are going to potentially even lose the battle to, to someone like China in this field. So uh, there will probably be a moment where they... Um, you know, liberalize the, the, the industry a bit. They do allow some people to rise, probably can a few others, you know, so there's going to be a few TikToks that they come down on 
and might be a few other corporations that they're going to subsidize and let fly, right? So who knows how exactly this merging of traditional and decentralized is really going to fly. But uh, so like I said, if there's one good thing about any of this is that, again, acknowledgement that these are vitally important to U.S. and its allies. Uh, you know, the main kind of doomsday scenario we really do have to look out for, guys, is one where if we do get into some kind of hot war with China, if there really is, you know, because one of the things seemingly going on is, uh, the administration kind of posturing a lot with China and if we do get into some kind of conflict we could see you know the world again kind of divided behind a Chinese curtain so to speak and uh, you could see how they'd be important to kind of segregate the internets even more than what the Great Wall of China has now and um, it's possible that something like you know crypto and Bitcoin being as international as it is, you know, right now it flies under the, the the financial radars to some degree. But in the world where suddenly you know you're in a war with China or something like that, or proxy war, and you got sanctions flying back and forth, uh, having these crypto technologies suddenly become almost like existential or like security threats on the uh, on the state level. So that to me is kind of like the worst case scenario. I wouldn't want to see that. Uh, you know. Know, Bitcoin fork into like a Chinese version and an English version, but um, that I guess is the more abstract uh, fear that we got to look into. Uh, well, I think you know I'm I'm feeling like there's going to be a Fed coin and we'll be forced to use the Fed coin, and Bitcoin will be outlawed or or made so inconvenient as to be might as well be outlawed. In the same way that gold was from like the the 30s to the 70s, I think I think we might see it that way. There could be like a 40 year period where Bitcoin's banned. It's like, well, man, I hope you got your ledger stash somewhere safe because you're not gonna be using it for the next 40 some years. It, it could be just like that. Uh, I was uh, I was uh, I was watching. Uh, he goes by the Bond King. Uh, he uh. I, I cannot remember his name because uh, hold, hold on, let, let me pull it up. He he deserves to have this his his name pulled up. Um, guy's name is Stephen Van Meter. Um, and, and Stephen Van Meter, uh, he did uh he did a very interesting uh, let me, yeah he uh, he he pulled uh. There's laws that are working their way through Congress right now that pertain to crypto. And these crypto laws basically spell out that the Federal Reserve um, is, um, is to make their own digital currency. Uh, you know, banks are going to be uh, on the blockchain. Everything is going to be, uh, you know, blockchain and, and digitized and stuff like that. And... Um, and it's 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 they and they've been building it for a few years already. Uh, we're just you know we're not at the point yet where they can deploy it. Uh, most likely, uh, they'll 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 consider deploying it. You know, during some sort of emergency. You know, you know how yeah. the how the federal government works. You know, never let a sure, disaster go. Away. It sure feels like we're heading that direction. I would not be surprised that they've been cooking up some yeah. kind of central bank currency in a area 51 bunker somewhere already for years that would be uh you know it's yeah. part of the part of the some contingency somewhere right yeah well i you know the the imf uh i, I this is another thing i was looking at the, the imf published a paper in 2015 where they discussed uh you know okay so we're the world is headed towards negative rates how can we get people to accept negative rates because negative rates is like bad it's can you imagine if you know you were when you put money in your bank account instead of the money the bank like putting extra money into your account every month the month the bank just took money out every month and then that money went to the government it's it's like an extra tax that is above and beyond the normal taxes and it's invisible to people because it happens like in the background uh that that's what we get with negative interest rates so uh to to get people to accept that you you really need a cashless system and and uh and most likely it will be during uh the next 
the next you know big recession whenever that happens. I don't know if it's going to happen on the backs of this coronavirus thing or maybe there is no second thing in lockdown. Maybe they're they, you know they come up with a vaccine. Maybe we go on another like three year long crazy bull run. I have no idea, guys. But you know whenever the next recession happens, you know they're going to be like, hey guys, we've got the solution. It's negative interest rates and we're going to we're going to streamline the we're going to streamline the financial system to help with the velocity of money we're going to introduce like this cashless stuff and 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 when you sign up to the cashless system we're going to stimulate your bank account directly we're just going to put dollars right in there so join our cashless fed dollar guys it's in your best interest and uh, that's probably how it's something along those lines Who knows? yeah uh i imagine if there is that kind of recession inbound um or you know even the great depression that's going to be characterized by belt tightening and what better way to tighten the belt than to give you a very tightly you know allocated and uh accounted for type of new money right could be a you know big uh, rationing or a level where the government does kind of subsidize to support people, but uh, the standard of life dramatically declines, and we all get used to uh, the new wonderful crypto money. That's uh, you know they're going to claim that they're going to sell solve all the ills of previous government in some ways, where like people were less accountable and money went to waste, and uh, they're going to justify I think. Uh, giving everybody kind of this yes, sense of scarcity that with the we new were money. The same people in charge before. Those people were corrupt. This new system will be great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're going to insist that this is going to solve the problems of the past. We won't repeat those and there'll be enough money to go around. Meanwhile, it's just going to be maybe a, you know, this digitally enforced scarcity or uh uh I don't know what to call it, but uh uh, great depression levels kind of enforced on the digital level where the government's going to sniff out every dollar and like you said even to the point where it's negative interest rates and uh no way you can't hide your money anywhere in front away from the man to not get your 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 I haircut, haircut not every month dollar. totally especially not with the digital dollars and, and with crypto they're going to tie identity to to the wallets and stuff like that so they'll be able to track all of that everything you do Exactly. I mean, that kind of goes hand in hand with the whole contact tracing meme afoot right now by government. All right. It's just it's mm -hmm. shocking how all these things seem to be kind of aligning uh, to a particular end. You know, it's not hard to see the the end game at this point, guys. After getting 2020 thrown in our face, you know, before 2020, this was all very conspiratorial. Now in 2020, this is all starting to materialize into reality. All right. Maybe uh, one final. A uh, story highlight here, of course, this is uh, the on again, off again, on again, uh, pen, uh, stimulus money. So the Trump, Trump admin preparing for supposedly a $1.8 trillion COVID stimulus proposal, largest such offer in negotiations with Dems, the Wall Street Journal. Where's that coming from? Okay, that was huge. That was loud. That was that me Sorry or was that you? That. It's all good. Um, okay. So, um, citing, these are people familiar with the discussion. So, as everybody might remember, Trump supposedly took um, stimulus and economic aid off the negotiating table, saying that, you know, he's not going to be doing anything like that till after, until after the election. Uh, yeah. Now he's back at the table again, and clearly, if the economy is going the way it is, people are going to need help. So, supposedly... Exactly. You know, the stock market The stock market this week was like, oh, there's going to be no stimulus? Well, then you can just die. And, like, seriously, it's... it's the, over the weekend, it's everybody's like oh no is is trump is trump gonna be okay you know is like where the 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 stock market was like uh you know it's looking a little shaky and stuff like that and then trump says there's not going to be a stimulus the stock market convulses once and then everybody starts publishing it's like hey maybe the democrats won't be so bad after all you know <laughs> democrats are actually gonna be great they're gonna spend a whole bunch of money it's gonna be great for the stock market <laughs> It's it's funny. It took like less than twenty four hours, and Trump's like, "Oh, well, you know, maybe maybe we will do stimulus after all, guys." Yep, yep. It's it's Don't crazy. Don't you still love me? It's crazy yeah. how things change day to day in just this week alone, let alone this year to to date. Yeah. But um, yeah, indeed, the uh, stock market was like, guys, "Oh, oh, really? No stimulus, huh?" Dude, we're like a month away from the election. This is serious now. Like, do you understand? We are now like the time is windows closing, and things still seem up in the air. 
I don't yeah. know where yeah. we're going to be in a month or so. It's going to be crazy, um, you know, coming out of the election and uh, the uncertainty in the air and the markets. But hell, maybe this is a good time to buy Bitcoin, right? Jack Dorsey just bought 25 million worth. Uh, maybe not bad to be holding that. Um, let's see here. All right, we're coming up on two oh, oh, hours. Real... What's that? Coming in? No, 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 nothing. Oh, I thought I thought you uh, you were breaking up there or something. All right, um, let me take a quick look here. Maybe the final story, but I don't know if you heard about this. Coinbase employees are quitting a lot this week. Did you hear about this? Yeah, I heard 5% ended up taking the buyout that uh, Brian offered them. Exactly, right? So, uh, so it's the... CEO of Coinbase, by Armstrong, recently uh, announced he was going to be committing to a new apolitical workplace philosophy. Uh, this is something that's kind of like a cancer eating at a lot of co corporate cultures lately, is a lot of activism in-house. And, you know, this is the whole get woke, go broke type concept. Uh, this is not always popular with the consumers or your customers um, to be pushing like... Uh, you know, really political, really polarized ideologies, especially when you're in this business of uh, finance. You know, maybe it's not a good idea to have a very uh, uh, explicit political stance. You know, you, you might uh, rise and fall based on the, uh, you know, what admins in power. So maybe it's best to stay political. So I think it was a smart move by Armstrong to kind of uh, uh, avoid this in house. Again, it is, I guess, a San to Francisco be pushing. Uh, based yeah. cryptocurrency exchange. So. Uh, you know, I guess like a lot, and it is a tech company still. So I guess uh, it's not just finance, but it's fintech and it's have San Francisco a very based, and um, that would suggest that um, uh, you know maybe their their workforce is inclined to such uh, social justice type causes. But yeah, he told them that this isn't gonna fly at work, and if you don't like it, here's the door, and here's a nice uh, severance package. Nothing personal, but we got a business to run here. I imagine that's how it played out. Uh, so this, there's an article here today at Courts at Work that talks about this. Talks about uh, is you know isn't isn't crypto inherently political? Um, you know, don't don't most people in crypto have have kind of a, an anarchist or like anti-system bent they are kind of revolutionary it is a revolutionary type technology right so is it really fair for brian armstrong to kind of curtail this it, it's tough it's a tough call right this is this is this is kind of an interesting concept uh but uh this idea you guys can explore it here in this article courts at work called five percent of coinbase staff ejected well i mean i feel like it's in this case it's kind of like i i do see I do see your point that th there is a business to run and you know, it's, it's like, Hey guys, can we, can we do the business and not do all this social justice stuff? But at the same time, it also feels a lot like, uh, it feels a lot like, you know, our corporate overlords are curtailing our freedom of speech and just buying them, buying it off of money. It's like, oh, okay, well you don't, I mean, if, if you, uh, <laughs> if you don't like our, no no free speech policy please feel free to exit the door and take this cash on the way out uh because i mean that's i mean it's sort of like what brian's policy is it's like okay we're not going to talk about this shit anymore and and i hear you and I, I see on the one hand that it's fair and it's a business and you can and you can kind of decide what gets talked about your business but also it's a little chilling especially considering the size of corporations and businesses these days and the precedent that it sets yeah, I mean, I can understand how these topics can be disruptive at work, or totally. um, yeah. really might kind of complicate complicate matters, and um, it, uh, it, it's it's probably a sticky sticky point, particularly if they are being you know Silicon Valley type based company. Um, people people ex they they inject uh, a lot of these things into every into every matter, even business matters, right? There's the whole controversy surrounding uh, Joe Rogan and Spotify. You know how Joe Rogan got yeah. that giant Spotify contract, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So as you, so, I think the um the New York based Spotify um workforce is like very progressive and they consider uh rogan to be a bit of like a skinhead type extremist right-wing extremist type figure and so they've been you know protesting his uh his arrival right so it's like the corporate leader you know corporate decides to 
sign this guy on and they spend a fortune doing it uh, but then you have your rank and file who feel that like this is a horrible mistake and this guy is uh, uh, condemnable. Um, you know, this is a that's a crazy clash. That's something you want to avoid. These are millions of dollars at stake here, and yet you have the corporate kind of clashing with the underlings who have their own like uh, activist agenda afoot and not realize that like you know this is a business and has to run like that. And maybe you can't permeate some of these things, but you know, I guess it's debatable. Definitely, like I said, I I can totally i i i see i see the CEO's side, but I just um. End of the day, you know, this is it, just it, it has a chilling effect on speech too. Yeah, it, it's it's probably just shrewd business. Uh, you know, uh, decisions, I guess, uh, business strategy, you could call it, because clearly other firms do engage in social activism, and I guess they consider well, it I mean, good you know, for the bottom you line, right? It's also a shrewd business activity. I don't, I don't know, no, necessarily means that we should encourage it. Yeah, I mean, you know, firm, p firms like Nike and stuff probably benefit yeah. from, from, from posturing with this, so whether or not they actually have any uh, allegiances to, to to these things, but I guess that's besides the point. Still interesting to think what happens like at Coinbase, and remember, P Coinbase is not like completely altruistic or um, you know indifferent politically. There's plenty of people who have been censored and banned off of Coinbase, much like they were banned and censored off of places like PayPal, right? So yeah. Coinbase still, um, <clears throat> if you think there's some kind of extremist organization, think you know, it's far from it, you know, people, lots of people get censored and banned off of Coinbase. So uh, Coinbase still kind of bows its, uh, or bends the knee to, to the, to, you know, to the uh, current censorship culture. Yeah, try and do culture. some coin mixing and then bring those coins over to Coinbase. See what, see what happens. Uh, not just that, but like controversial people, they get like canceled by cancel culture. Coinbase kind of usually indulges what those. Coinbase? Coinbase bans those people from from using their platform, so they haven't done anything wrong. But I, I, I'm just I'm I I don't understand how are people like using Coinbase's platform to you collect donations for your cause, like yo, you're uh you know you're just just a figure and. PayPal bans you because some people can get supported through PayPal, but then, you know, the, the cancel culture catches up with them, bans them from PayPal, and then Coinbase shortly after, too, right? So say, you know, you can't accept PayPal donations anymore, okay, I, I can accept Coinbase, or, you know, you, you don't even accept Coinbase donations, you accept Bitcoin, but you're using Coinbase as your primary, you know, in, you know, in and out, um, and, uh, cancel culture catches up with you there too right so people have been banned off of coinbase based on their like political and other opinions online right uh i was unaware of that yeah so they so it's not it's not like they're trying to act completely oh, wait. is it is this really brian armstrong being like hey now no one's going to get banned for politics or is this really him being like hey now even our own employees can get banned for politics. Um, that's what it really feels like could, to me. Well, to me, it's more of just this is an eternal metal matter, kind of separate to that. But I think some people are taking this take taking this away as like um, that. Uh, he Armstrong is is conservative and he sides with like uh, more of a right leaning perspective and he doesn't want to like you know because obviously if you don't support BLM you you kind of made out to be the opposite so. Uh, they're trying to. I think there's a bit of a narrative afoot saying that you know he's kind of like a right-wing fascist type fucking authoritative figure in the company now is kind of the the, the the brush they're painting it with. When really they it could be further from the truth. These guys have like still a very liberal you know Silicon Valley based company that's banned plenty of um, figures, particularly right-wing figures, from using it in recent years. So it's like let's not get it twisted, guys. But Sorry, it doesn't pass the purity test. Indeed, but uh, all right, that about covers it. Let me just see who else I got a shout out to in the chat. I see a challenge investor showed up here. Uh, if any, okay, so we're gonna DM him later. Beef low, T Dub, Smiles, Stefan Hyatt was here. Uh, Longbeard was with us. Longbeard's a new member. Shout out to Longbeard. I see that the, he was chatting with us in the live chat for a while, saying that he's kind of new to crypto and wants to uh, 
kind of get his feet wet. Uh, my advice to you is come join us in the Discord, and there's some knowledgeable people here. And uh, my, I guess what you should be doing is learn how to buy, store, and maybe transfer Bitcoin. Get familiar with Bitcoin. Don't buy in all at once. Uh, just get a little bit at a time. Kind of get fig figure out where you are. Stay maybe close to the podcast and to the Discord. And in a few months, you'll probably be more comfortable with your investment and kind of have an idea of what you want to do next in this space. Um, but that about covers it for day. Any other final thoughts, uh, Alex? Um, no, I think, uh, I think it's best to be long biased over the weekend, guys. You might, uh, you might get really tempted to like, you, you see, you're looking for an entry and you're going to short to the entry and then you're going to long at the entry. It almost never works that way, guys. You're probably going to get steamrollered and you're going to get trapped in a short or something like that. You know, the entire market is looking very bullish right now. Uh, so I just look for assets to long. And if something, I mean, you, you, Uniswap token is a special example just because it, it kind of already had its bullish movement and it's going to retrace that. But I, I would just only look for like a good trend to get into and then try and try and hold on to it for you know, a few days to a week or something like that. Because if the market is turning right now, chances are it's going to turn for a while. Just like we just had a few down weeks, we could have a few up weeks. So, you know, we kind of want to kind of want to find things that we can just grab, hold on to, and be be safely, safely and happily in profit. So, uh, you know, so don't be afraid to. I mean, if you don't necessarily see anything over the weekend right away, that's cool. Maybe wait till Monday. This the goal is to just be in something that we can just sit in profitably. Okay, guys. All right. Well, much appreciated. Thanks, everybody, who joined us for the last two hours. Thank you to Alex and Jason, who took us through most of the charts. Uh, well, I guess we'll be back by Monday. Hopefully, uh, get Justin back on the stream for them. Everybody else, enjoy their weekend. Uh, catch us in the Discord. Probably going to be watching some UFC tomorrow night. Um, till then, guys, uh, you know what to do. Hit that like button. Cheers. Have a good one.